about an initiative being taken by Gary and Rochelle Corbett. They're circumnavigating across the UK, France and Ireland to try and break a world record. And Gary joins me now. Good morning to you, Gary. Good morning. How are you, Alan? The question is, how are you? Because you must be quite saddle sore. You've been cycling for how long at this stage? Uh, we started out in London on April 23 and um, went straight to Plymouth in England and over to Brittany and France and we've uh, covered since then nine and a half thousand kilometres. That's an incredible feat. Why are you doing this? Um, well, we're doing it on electric bikes. Um, where uh, a number of reasons. Um, we we want to show that uh, electric bikes are the, the, the way of the um, the future for um, commuting in general and um, cycle touring as we're doing. But also, it's uh, it's the opportunity. Like we're sixty, I'm sixty, and Rochelle, my wife, is fifty six. Um, it, it's showing that people of our age can get out and cycle to or see the world on a on a bicycle. Most people who are doing this sort of touring would be in their twenties and thirties and uh, on a on a regular bike. So it's kind of it's a, it's a personal challenge for you. you yeah, yeah, it's a personal challenge for you and Rochelle. But you're also hoping that what you're doing as you try to break this world record will inspire we are. others. Well, when we started to look into to doing the tour, I realised that the distances for a world record weren't astronomical. Uh, the current record's just over sixteen thousand kilometres because it's new technology that the bikes that we're riding now. The technology has really been a, only been around for about three years. Um, so we decided to see if we could set a new record, and uh, so we're planning to, to cycle for the best part yeah. of 18 months. Well, we talk about your journey in a second. Let's talk about the bike itself, because I, 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 as, as one who goes out running, sometimes I hear this put, 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 like a little scooter, and then this, it looks like a bicycle, but it has a little engine and it goes by me. Can I take yeah. it that your bike is somewhat different? Because I'm told, I reliably informed, that you do quite a lot of pedalling. It's only which you, where you hit the steep inclines that the uh, the electric part of this kicks in. Explain yeah, well, they're me. called um, electric assist, which means if you don't pedal, nothing happens. Uh, it's not like you've got a throttle where you can just sit back and um, use the throttle to, to get the electric as- assist. So um, essentially, it's, it looks like a regular bike. It, it acts like a regular bike. But when you get to the hills, you have four levels of boost, economy, tour, sport and turbo. Um, so depending on the, the size of the hill and the steepness of the hill, you can dial in the level assist that you want but you can't go into full assist all the time or your battery will run out of power uh, so do you regenerate the battery by your own pedal power when you're on the flight no no no, unfortunately not no we have to plug into mains electricity on a daily basis so you charge how long does the charge last for um three to three and a half hours it takes to charge and it really depends on the terrain that you're cycling over uh, here in Ireland already, we seem to be getting about 60 kilometres per battery. We both have two batteries. We have a spare each. Um, so we probably here in Ireland, we would think we'd probably have a range of 100 to 120 kilometres a day. And what do you cycle every day? We cycle most days, yeah. Um, prior to coming over to Ireland, we cycled for about 21 days straight before we decided we needed a rest. Um mm. Yeah. But we're now both pretty fit, so we can we can handle the distances. And pardon me for asking, and I know Rochelle is beside you, so I'll have a chat with her in a yeah. second, but just remind us what age group you are again. I'm 60. Yeah. And Rochelle's 56. Right. Well, can, so, I, talk to yeah. Yeah, can I talk to Rochelle for a quiet second then? <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. Here she is. Uh, we're speaking to Gary and Rochelle Corbett. They're circumnavigating. Hello, how are you doing, uh, Rochelle? How, how is uh, your journey so far? What have you made of it? What have you enjoyed uh, most about it? absolutely loved it. When Gary first put the idea in my mind, I just said yes because I wanted a bit of adventure and to wasn't happy in the job I was doing. But I said yes, but I couldn't actually see me doing it. So now I'm this far into it, I'm just amazed every day that um, my first thousand was like a revelation, but now we're into the nines and it's like, wow, I'm really doing this. So it's just fantastic. And the people I've met that we've met on the way, it's just 
it's an amazing journey. I mean, Europe at the moment is quite a volatile place with refugees and everything. Have you come across any hassle on your journey or have you, have you taken safe routes? No, we've been really sticking to a lot of um, national routes, which are in, like, called Sustrans or um, Eurovelo in Europe. So they're actually designated cycle routes. And so we don't try to go on road if we have to, but, you know, we try to stay in safe places, obviously. But no, we haven't come across anything like that. Uh, to, to us, we don't even realise that all these things are happening in the world because our life has just been, you know, it's just been a fantastic journey. But we are aware of it. But and have you had any excitement on your journey that has taken you through all these countries? Have you met some very interesting people, a story all or two to time. share? Yeah, like Amazing what? people all the time. In every country, we, there's always a character and um, just the hospitality and what we've learned on the way. It's just, It's been... I couldn't pick one specific because every day is when you turn around the corner, there's some new adventure every day because everywhere we've been, we've never seen before. So it's every minute's exciting. But of course, we also have, you know, harder times as well. Mm. So, um, but yeah, we just say it is what it is. That's our motto of the day. It is what it is. I, I, mean, <laughs> I know I've covered this with uh, 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 Gary earlier, but just people want to know wh- where you uh, started this journey again. People have just tuned in and want to find out where, where uh, have you started. Yes. We started in London, and um, we because we have we went to Europe first for our three months because we're Australians we can't stay in Europe indefinitely. Yeah. So after our three months there, we we came back to London and went up the east coast of England up to Scotland, down the, the west coast, and then now we're going to circumnavigate Ireland. And have the two of you effectively retired from work, or are you taking some um, time? Out? No, well Gary's a. a a writer and a journalist has been all his life and he's actually been doing a little bit of writing for different cycle tour companies and um, I'm having a year off. I'm his IT lady. Mm-hmm. I'm actually a school teacher and I, before this um, trip, I've been working in Bangkok for a year teaching in international schools. So I'm, I'm basically his, his, um, right hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's two separate bicycles. Two bikes, yes. Um, two how, how, how close are you now to the actual record? Oh, well, we're only four and a half months into it and we've already clocked up nearly 10,000 and the record's 16 and a half. So we've come a long way in a very short time. Yeah, all right. So you will, will you continue when you crack the record when you do 16,001? Is that it or will you try and push no, it out a bit I more? Think, yeah, Gary has 20,000 in his mind. Mm-hmm. But um, weather permitting and um, everything else, so yeah. And if, if we don't need to stop at that time, we can keep going if the weather's with us and our, yeah. our visas and, and everything's in order. We can um, keep going till the end of next summer. All right, Rochelle. Look, I'd like to just have a quick chat with Gary again before yes, we let yes, you Gary, get yes. off. Yeah, uh, okay. we're speaking to Gary and Rochelle Corbett, circumnavigating across the UK, France, and Ireland on these electric oh. bicycles. People are going to be asking, "Can you access these bicycles?" I can't get into product mentioning. Are they easy to access? Ah, uh, yes. There's a, an agent in uh, in Dublin who sells the exact bikes that we're riding, high bikes. Yeah, and without mentioning price, uh, are are they expensive? Are they reasonable? They're the upper end of electric bikes in, in price, right, okay. uh, upper end range. There, there are some ordinary um, Chinese make ones around that yeah. give the industry a bit of a bad name. But the r- bikes we're riding, these high bikes, are a German-made bike and they're... They're very safe. They're, they're, they're very safe. They're the top, top range bikes. They're uh, an amazing machine. They haven't missed a beat. Well, look, you're you're encouraging people. I know one or two people even here are thinking of taking up cycling again. It's a fabulous hobby. And if you are a little bit wary, getting a little bit hardier and and wary of the hills, perhaps the inspiration that you're bringing this morning might get uh, people, more people to do it. Have you got, people have asked me, are you blogging as you go? Can they? Yeah, we've got a a website, which is www.ebikecycletourists. Yeah. All one word, ebike cycletourists.com and from there people can follow your journey yeah that'd be wonderful uh, we'd be we'd be interested to hear from anyone along the way where um, because it's the time of the year and campgrounds are closing down 
we're looking for somewhere to, to put our tent every night. So you, you, I presume you brought the, ver- the bare minimum of belongings because it would be quite a trek trying to cycle and carry a, a weight of uh, stuff. How are you managing uh, that we're, way? We're, we're, well, we've got, we're both carrying cycle trailers. Yeah. And uh, we have everything, our cooking gear, our, our tents, our you know sleeping bags, clothes for cold climates and hot climates and computers because we're... Um, we're working on the computer all the time. Uh, yeah, no, we're we're carrying a lot of weight. I, I think yeah. all up, I've probably got fifty kilos on my bike. Yeah. And Michelle, probably thirty odd. Yeah, well, you'd be half the man you were physically, but twice the man you were mentally. I suppose that's the way you describe it. Is that right? That's, that's a good way to put it. I've yeah. definitely lost weight, and um, I think I'm a lot wiser than I was. <laughs> Listen, Gary and Rochelle, wish you well. Or thanks to Robbie Symes, who very kindly linked us up with you this morning. Good thanks to Robbie thanks. for that. And look, safe travelling. And when do you head off again? Uh, we're, we're cycling off today. We're heading towards, where are we heading to? Feathered on Sea. Feathered, feathered, feathered on Sea. So people may, may toot their horns when they see you on the road. Thanks very uh, much, Gary and Rochelle. Good morning to you. Okay. It's uh, coming up to 19 minutes away from the top of the hour.